Nation Black Power family. Uh, we are here at the uh, Shadow Dojo in New Haven, Connecticut. We are on the ground with a legend in the community, uh, a, a very well-respected pillar and elder in the community, okay? So we wanted to definitely bring you into the dojo, but not only that, show you what they do for the community and how they're such a valuable institution in the community, but we also wanted to show you one of the pillars behind that, one of the nucleus to that reality being what it is. I want to introduce you respectfully to the brother. Grand Professor. Grand Professor. Formal introduction. Yeah, 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 listen here. Let me give a formal introduction. Professor. This is the, yeah, professor is his type. This is Brother Jahan Shabazz, also known as George Bumsey. Master of Shotokan Dynamic University. This is Asoki. So. All right, they're a little more complicated than I am, right? <laughs> I've been doing the martial arts for about 50 years. Uh, I started in New Haven about uh, about 40 years ago. I can hold it. Uh, I'm a 10th degree black belt, and as you develop your degrees, they got different titles. And once you master your, your system, you can accept the grade of professor. And I accepted that degree humbly, which only means I know a little bit more about what's going on than they do. So other than that, I'm just Jaha Shabazz. I've been in New Haven since I was 19. I've been teaching. I've been teaching in New Haven since I was 20. I started in the Muhammad's Mosque. And after the assassination of Malcolm X, I started my own thing. And uh, what can I say? I teach Shotokan Jiu-Jitsu and Aikido. Uh, I train with Master George Cofield, Professor Moses Paul, some of the legends. Other than that, I'm just a brother trying to teach some brothers and sisters how to do this martial arts thing. It was here before I got here. It's going to be here after I leave. And they say I'm pretty good. And I think I know what I'm doing. Peace, peace, family. We are here on another episode of Baba TV, which you know is always fire every time. We got a special treat for the family today. So, yes! I need posture straight. I need the spear straight. And I want it to You know, Baba TV and Brother Sankofa, you know, um, 
what we do is we travel, we get around. We like to bring the message to the people, okay? But we like to go to the people in different cities. See how they get down in different cities, different hoods, you know, different demographics. And we like to go always and test on the ground the pulse of the people, feel the temperature of the people. And here we are doing it again on this segment, okay? We are right here um, in New Haven, Connecticut. Yes, right. New Haven, um, a very historical place. One of the original 13 colonies. Uh, it's very rich in black history. Um, you have the history um, pertaining to Amistad, a lot of that in which took place here. Um, everything, when you read the book, um, Medical Apartheid, you see Yale um, and um, Yale University, Yale Medical University, and it's part in medical experimentation on black people, especially black women. A lot of history here. A very small state, and New Haven, Connecticut is even a small city, but even though it's one of the smallest cities in a very small state in this country, it has an epidemic. It shares the same epidemics and the plights of other urban inner cities. Crime, poverty, disease, you know what I'm saying? Um, homicide, bad health, you know what I mean? A lot of these things stemming from the same systemic problems, you know what I mean? Um, here it is, um, New Haven has been rated number four or three, maybe like three or four years in a row, as the most dangerous city in the country, which is very interesting for a city so small and a, a town so, and a state so small and the, the diversity to be the diversity to be so different, you know what I mean, Baba? You have some of the richest counties in the world right here in the state. You have Greenwich, Connecticut, for instance. You know what I mean? Then on the other end of the pendulum, you have places like Bridgeport, Hartford, New Haven, that fuel some of the worst and most dangerous uh, neighborhoods and inner city blocks in a, in the country. So you have from the, the pendulum from the richest to the poorest, right in the smallest state, which is a testimony to what America is and this capitalistic regime in which we exist on a microscopic level. It's just letting you know what it is so we're here on the ground in connecticut new haven dubbed okay pissed money craving pistol waving new haven that's what they call it money craving pistol waving new haven okay and we're here on the ground to test the pulse of the people to interact with the people talk about everything from hip-hop to community activism um right now we're here at a, a historic dojo well a historic sensei in the city of Connecticut. A brother who they say has been doing these martial arts and who has been a grand master in this field, okay, of martial arts known as Shutan Kund, Shukantan Bando. Shut, Shutukan Bando. Okay, one more time. Shutukan Bando. Right here, professional, Professor Jahad Shabazz. Okay, karate, self-defense, boxing, judo, personal fitness, training, kickboxing, aikido, jiu-jitsu, you name it. And it's known as the Dynamic University, Shadow Dojo. So right here, and these are brothers are not just into the martial arts, they're also into the activism, into the culture. That's right, they are RBG'd up, people. So me and Baba TV found it very necessary that while being here in New Haven, Connecticut, on the ground with the people, what better place to go to than an institution in the community that deals with self-defense, discipline, health, and also college and knowledge of self. Oh, I messed up right there. I have to blooper that part out. I can't remember to say that part. Okay. Yeah, so we're here on the ground, and we're going to go up there and have an exclusive interview with the brother who is also a pivotal, uh, a pivotal um person in the community as far as being a role model um, for a lot of years, for a lot of decades, since 1964, to my understanding, okay, who was just greeted with the esteemed community award known as the uh, Dixwell Community Partnership Award, but he'll go into that and explain to you exactly what that is. Um, so we're going to have an interview with him, and we're going to really bring this to the people, RBG style, right here, New Haven, Connecticut, people. Let's go on the ground and kick it with some of the people. My brother, my brother, my brothers. Peace, peace. Peace, family. Black power. Peace, love, and light. Black power to the family. Okay, these are some brothers who are on the ground right here in New Haven, Connecticut. Residents of this community right here in New Haven, Connecticut, in which we are now standing. We are right now on, what is it? Uh, Dixwell. 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 You right, Connecticut. You almost said it right. Ah, you almost got it right. Okay, so um, these brothers right here. 
trained in martial arts, all right? They're going to go into you, to, uh, uh, talk to you a little bit about the form of martial arts in which they study, okay? And other things that they're doing on the ground in the community. Brother Bourne, talk to the people. All right, well, BB-48, Mahahotep, AAEP, Ancient African Egyptian Power. Um, you know, I'm your brother Bourne, brother Bourne from right here in New Haven, CTRBG, Dynamic University. Um, as the brother said, you know, we practice Shotokan Bondo. And CTRBG, our main theme is that, you know, you know, family first. Black love is black power. And we down here right now at the Dynamic University, which has become a home for CTRBG and the works that we do in the community. Um, the, the professor here has made this a home for us that we can get out and do the community work that need to be done because he's seen what we were already instilling in the community. He's been a pillar of the community for over 50 years inside the martial arts system. Um, Shotokan and is a 10th dawn right now. And, um, you know, what, what other questions, uh, whatever things yeah, we need to cool. know, man. That's cool. Um, how, how long have you been training in martial arts? I mean, like, tell us a little bit about you. What, 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 what sparked your interest in martial arts? Because we also know that you're not just in the arts. We well, you know that you're in a many different forms of arts. You're also in the art form of hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? You're into martial arts. And not only that, you're proactive in the community. So you're also a community activist. So, you know, tell a little bit of people a little bit about what sparked your interest in martial arts. And, you know... A little bit about you, your daughter, you know what I'm saying? And why this school is so important in the community. All right, all right. Well, I've been dealing with martial arts I don't, probably since, you know, since Kung Fu Theater. You know what I mean? That's the first, you know, that's the first place that I seen martial arts was Kung Fu Theater. So that's been my early introduction to the martial arts. Uh, this, this style that we're practicing right now, the Shotokan is something that is new to me in particular. We, I deal with jujitsu, a little bit of Wing Chun, things of that nature, and we did really deal with a street system. We, New Haven itself is a martial arts city. If you go back and look at its history in the 60s and 70s, it's a martial arts city. And so you have senseis that are just in the community who just teach the youth on just because that's just part of what you do as a sensei. Once you become a black belt, you know, you're, that's your job is to go out and get that art back to the people. Eastern discipline, Eastern craft. Um, these is the reasons that I'm down here, though. Real, real life is the, is, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit older than some of these guys right here, but these two are, are the reason that I'm down here now is because the things that they instilled in me from things that I gave them that I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Brother's telling me that, listen, you know, you said something good to me. And the things that you talked about earlier, you know, when I was a youngster, 15, 16 years old, kept me away from things that could kept me in a bad, you know what I mean? It put me in a bad situation. I'm saying this brother is over 20, living in a high crime area, and they got no felonies, man. Ain't got, they never been arrested, no nothing. And we all, and you know, we in a city that's got all type of affiliations. You know what I'm saying? So... You're going to meet people in all different type of factions and gangs and things of that nature. And to have people who are affiliated like that and still be able to walk a path where you got something in your head because gangster is the new, you know what I'm saying, the new gangster. Gangster is being smart. Gangster is knowing what time it is out here, really controlling your politics, you know what I mean? And politics is what you deal with. You're dealing in the gangster culture. You know what I mean? So we always known that as the youngsters coming up. So now me being a, a elder now, all of a sudden, I know that I got to give back because I never want to be the elders that I could point my finger at and say, yo, I, uh, this is why we messed up right now. This is why shit ain't rocking with us right now. So I'm glad to be down here because Jahan Shabazz is one of the elders in the community who is really an elder, not just an old head, somebody who seen and been through a lot of the things that we've been through and was able to take in a crew of cats that people don't really like to deal with. You know what I mean? Because we like, we real dudes out here. You know what I mean? I'm on some real shit. I'm in this wheelchair, man. I've been in this wheelchair over 10 years. Be not from, not from nothing else, but I can walk the streets still in the wheelchair. I can still go out 1.30 in the morning and walk my streets and don't have no problem with nobody. Young bulls roll up, roll up on me like, yo, listen, you, you need somebody to roll with you home? Nah, I'm good, I'm good. Yo, we going with you anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I walk the streets with no fear after being shot out here. And still ain't got no fear to walk the streets with no problem because I wasn't shot out of no malice, no hardship like that. Because that ain't never been my style, but I've been about 
what I do so people respect me. And that's what, that's what it's about right here, is me showing and proving that respect. Because that's what I learned through the nation of God's earth, that you got to show and prove. You can't talk these young heads into nothing. You got to be the change that you want them to be. If you be that shit, then you good, man. And that's, that's what it's about here, man. We feed on the ground. That's what I got. I got a radio show. Matter of fact, feed on the ground radio, talkshoe.com. Check us out on Feet on the Ground on YouTube also. And we working, man. We Dynamic University. We working. We're going to set you out to our YouTube page, man. You look at our Dynamic University YouTube page, man. You'll see footage of our babies putting in that work. And that's what it's about, man. It's about our youth. We, we, we scholarship damn near all the children that go here. You know what I mean? Martial arts is about... You go to any martial arts school, this is normally going to be $125, $150 right. a better easy. We giving people classes fifty dollars a month, man. And if you don't got it, just sign your kids up, and we gonna figure out how to keep the lights on. We are gonna figure out how to pay the rent. We are gonna figure out how to get them geese. We gonna do that just because we know that they need that that foundation of focus, control, and discipline. That's what and that's what we teach. That's what we about right here, man. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm long winded when I'm asked a question, but I ain't the type to just really try to get out here in front of the camera. So. Don't mind my, you know, some of the jitters that I got. I mean, dealing with the, dealing with doing, well, doing right back and forth with the camera. That ain't really my style. But I say this, man. I, I grew up as a Panther Cub. You know what I mean? So I'm just part of. I'm part of this. I can't help but to be what I am. You know what I mean? I can't help but to do this. You see me? I got my Panther wear on. We dealing with. So check 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 out Panther wear too on, on. You know what I'm saying? On the internet. It's part of something that I deal with. The brother uh, put me down on this situation, man. It's a good, it's a good situation. It's black, it's black business. Black people doing black business, and yo, you can't beat that. He let me vent for him, which is a good thing. Where we can put this product up and down the coast, where that's what we need to do. And so I'm looking out to everybody. We're looking to get a storefront, and we're looking out to all everybody who got a line to try to put them in one situation where we can just have stores that have all these different lines that we have. And so that's what that's what it's about here, man. Family first. Black love is black power. You know, um, I don't know what else, man. I mean, okay. here we go. Wow, man, powerful. So, man, you're, you're, you're getting the people familiar with, you know, what's going on here on the ground as far as your participation in it. And I do respect that because y'all are a pillar and in an institution in the community. And a lot of times the people do ask, well, what is the black power and the black conscious community doing in the community? Or there are no institutions. I mean, this is an institution here. And then we not only that, we have people who are pillars in these institutions who have been um, consistent in what they do in the community. Um, you know, you all have Brefix programs. Yeah, 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 Tell them a little bit about the Brefix programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You, you sparked me up. You sparked me up. I'm ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready to rock. <laughs> but really, really what he said is real, though. We do that in the community, man. We, we do the clothes drive. We did a breakfast program all, you know, all summer. We do the breakfast program for the babies on the weekends because some of the schools do carry out the breakfast during the week, but we see the babies hungry all the time. So we try to be out there and on a regular basis just feeding the community. And one of the things that we know is that the only way you build a community is through common unity. Mind the loud noise. But... You know what I'm saying? We can, yeah, this this what it's like. It's like a it's little like New, New York. York right? This is New Haven. This is like a little New York. This is like it's 130,000 people here, right? But it's like a, this like one of the boroughs in the city. We got city flavor. You know what I'm saying? We're a city type of people. Even though you can see it still got a little laid back type of atmosphere. Like if you was out in Brooklyn where it's a little, you know what I'm saying, little houses and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I, this is the type of atmosphere that's out here. You know what I mean? But like I said, we do, we work with the babies all the time. We teach them entrepreneurial skills. Every, on the weekends, during the summertime, we show them how to sew, how to make necklaces, and just speak to them on how to be an entrepreneur, how to go get doing business as, um, you know, um, titles and, and licenses, and be accredited at least with a doing business as uh, entity, at least being that you can do credible business out here in the street with no problem. So we teach them little things like that where that's only $5 to become a business. So we teach them little stuff like that, man, little intricacies that people don't really let them know and that I didn't know when I was younger to try to get them a little bit further than where I had gotten at that time. Um, we hold classes during the summer. We, we open it up at 1.30. We strive to do an all-day program, but we, we the city just wouldn't work with us with getting the funds. And so that's one of the problems that we're working with the city trying to do that. So one of the things that Brother Sam Kofa spoke to me on, he said, yo, listen, put the fillers out, put your arms out, reach out to the people and see if they could help respond to what we got going on here. It, co it would cost us 35000 to run it all day. 
but we're going to run it at least half of the day, 1.30 to 6 o'clock, just because that's just what we're going to do, period, point blank. We don't care. Nobody's going to get paid. We're going to put everything down. That's what it's going to be, and we got volunteers. And that's one thing that I like about what we got going on, CTRBG, is that Everybody who come in, like on the breakfast programs, when we're doing our clothes, clothing drive, giving clothes back and stuff like that, everything that we do, even when we do events, demos, and things like that, everybody volunteering for everything. We do the, we, we do the fish. Man, listen, man, we just giving away free fish. Uh, vegans on Sundays with the We Here program, we do a vegan Sundays, man. Listen, this is what we do, and we realize that if you feed the people, especially the babies, when they hungry, then you can get their ear. It ain't about just beating on them. It's about showing them some love. I ain't got, I'm not going to sit there and just try to listen, man. You need to be doing the right thing, and you're doing wrong. Damn all that. That don't work. I'll let them know that, listen, I'm feeding you because I love you. That's it. Point blank, period. Eat that, you know what I'm saying? And if you come back, that's what it is. If you don't, that ain't what it is. Hit, hit them off with a pamphlet. We be having a little literature and stuff like that. Let them know exactly who we are. And, and that's what it be about, man. It's, black love is black power. That's what it's about, man. Now, this school here, right? Um, tell us a little bit about the school. Um, there's this school, to my knowledge, is, is fairly new here. Not the martial art technique or the, 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 the students in the school per se, but the school in this location itself. And I've been up there before. We're going to bring the people up there and, you know, g give them a little um, tour of the school. But um, and it's, it's, I love it up there. I mean, the way it has potential, it's always room for improvement, but it's a hell of a foundation to start with, and it's definitely a gem in this community and a much needed one. And um, we want to know how long has the school been here, this school specifically, and um, tell them what's going on with the school about trying to raise um, f uh, basically contributions in the form of funding to try to make sure that this institution stays up and running in the community. Talk about that. Well, well, we've been here at the Dynamic University right here for almost a year right now. As I said, the professor, he came down from Virginia looking at New Haven, coming down over over a two-year period, coming down and seeing us in the community doing things, seeing us out doing what we was doing, taking notice of the things that were needed, and he was going to be given a spot, yes. but it never came through. The people, you know, the city, different things happened, so he was never given a spot. So he decided that, listen, man, I'm going to go in my pocket, and I'm going to get a spot my own self, man. Mm -hmm. So he worked with the uh, with the the owner of the, of this lot, which is a black man, you know what I'm saying, who owns the whole, uh, this whole little mini mall right here, and he got with him and got the, and got the dojo for us, and he opened it up and said, listen, man, this is what y'all going to do. Y'all going to come here, yes. you're going to work with me. He was like, listen, brother, you're going to work with me, you're going to get your team, they're going to come here, right. and we're going to put in some work, and we're going to get out there in the streets and do what we got to do, and he rounded us up and gave us the diet. This is what we needed from an elder, because we was doing things, but we needed a little bit of elder direction. Like, yo, listen, man, y'all got a better potential than what y'all doing right now, and you could do more. So keep rocking, you know what I'm saying? Keep rocking, but I got somewhere for you to go. I got somewhere where you can hold events, where you can fundraise and raise money so you can do things out there in the community. And the thing that we're trying to do now for the, for the university is we're trying to get mats for the floors, make sure that we got proper gears for the babies, make sure that, you know, we got proper padding for the youth, shin guards, um, arm guards, you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. And that's, those are the basic things that we're trying to get. We, and we're going to work hard. You know what I mean? Period. Because we working for the families. You, we got the mothers, they come in, they sit, they watch, they enjoy what's going on. And that's that's the main thing about what's happening here. Like I said, we've been here a year. Um, we'll be here a year in September. September. We'll be here a year, right? Mm -hmm. No matter of fact, or in the August, y'all about two weeks, uh, yeah, about, the, about, about two weeks in the August, the beginning of September, we was we was in here. He had came through and seen us like we did a breakfast program all 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 the summer. And he just was like, "Yo, listen, man, I see the winter time coming. Y'all gonna need somewhere to make sure that y'all can make moves, man." And he was like, "Yo, come on in," because he seen what he he liked what we was doing. You know what I mean? And and he gave us the energy, and so we we try to just give it back to him, man, and give him that respect of just trying to do the right thing here. Like we said, he been in the practice for over 50 years. You know what I mean? This brother guarded Malcolm X at a point in time in his life. 
You know what I mean? So this brother has a history of going back, has done martial arts. He knows he knows the uh, you know, he knows the Moses Powell's. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He knows Moses the Powell's. grand yeah, he knows the grand grand masters, the Ronald Duncans. You know what I mean? He knows these people personally, has personal relationships with the little Johns. A lot of the brothers right up out of um, New York. Uh, with the with the uh, Grandmaster uh, Mustafa, the Master Muhammad from down there in New York, and and so this is what we got when we got here, man. We got to get that history back, learn to build a connection to the elders, and the elders helped us build that connection to the youth. And so that's what it is, man. I'm I'm a little bit older. These are the youth. This is another one the G's rolled up on us. Like I said, it's a community. You know what I mean? And this is what it be about. You know what I mean? This is what it really be about, man. It's about just putting our feet on the ground and putting in work. We down here on the other end. You know what I mean? If you was up towards where we would live at, be a little bit more youth out. You know what I mean? But this is what we doing right here. And on a Friday, it's a chill, relax. But y'all going to come into the dojo, talk to our professor. We're going to make sure that y'all get a little bit of footage of what we do. Show y'all that, listen, man, self-defense is self-awareness. That's one of the reasons that you got to get into the martial science, because the martial science is the science of warfare. And everything that we're dealing with out here is warfare. You got to understand that when you're dealing in this community, when you're dealing in this society, everything is warfare, man. And I'm talking about that go from education, that's politics, that's your health, that's the food that you eat. You know what I'm saying? That, it's a whole gimmick that runs that you have to realize that that's warfare everything is warfare economic warfare everything is built on that precipice so let's move forward on that that is war out here peace is between us but it's war out here in the community man so we got to get out here fighting i love the, i love uh, being with my peoples i'm a um I'm an active African. This is one of the things I said me and the brother Sankova was building about consciousness um, when, uh, probably about, about a couple weeks back. You know what I'm saying? We had a little, you know, we was on and I'm like, and I was just saying that I wasn't a conscious person, not because I wasn't, you know, I'm not aware of what's happening. I was just like, yo, I'm active. I'm an active African. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm about. And I like to take, I can take 10 active people who move it in motion and we can get something done. And so it's good to be conscious. It's good to be aware, but it's better to move on just a little bit of awareness that you got, man. I got stories of pain in plenty fashions. Same street war sitting in your hood, you know plenty action. Hot shots popped in my spine in the midst of action. See me in the chair, realize that I'm not acting. Plan to snap back in a place like elastic. My lines designed to be like hooks in every line of your mind. Make you think, damn it, feel like his life is mine. Cause you understand the pain in his life of mine. Game of life is trife, ain't no life as lines. You guaranteed to die and that's in no amount of time. And you can find suicide through cyanide mixed with turpentine and my body was shaking hard for me to write this song but i just writing on and just write it off watch the earth crying new england the strangest storm gotta stop crying for your pain to be gone me i build on pray to survive to the morn say it's strange to hear a man when the crying the song the world's corrupt who knows the rights from wrong your chest pressed with stress is going to get it off yeah. black power <laughs> so i wanted to ask you brother we up here in the dojo all right this is where it goes down at this is where um future ch potential champions are made you know what i'm saying but character and discipline is definitely built and honor is key right here um so i want to ask you this being that you're a master in what you do in martial arts right a master student okay humbly <laughs> um student right you, hey you're, you're right yeah yeah well you're never a, you're, you're not a teacher once you start becoming a student so we're always students we got to become master students I'm sure that people is, will assume that being that you have limited mobility due to the fact that you are in a wheelchair, that you have a less of a defense mechanism, less of the capability to properly defend yourself in the uh, potential event uh, of a situation or onslaught. You know what I mean? We want to give the people a little demonstration of how the, how the guard born gets down. How, if you was to embark in an unfortunate situation, whereas it turned to a physicality, how would you be able to defend yourself? You know what I mean? With your limited, mo but perceived to be limited mobility, okay? And therefore easy to be taken advantage of. Give the people a little demonstration of how y'all do it up here at the Shadow, do at the shadow Dojo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Here, I might break your joint right here. Bring you back. You no, know saying hold on to it. You've been laying down on the wow. broke his wrist. 
Oh, Whoa. Go go yeah, yeah, show it a little slower. So that was so quick. So the people, so, the people's. Okay. Uh. It depends on how big the person is. Because if you hit him there, he a big boy. You might not really get no. He might not loosen up. He might tighten up and get it. So me personally, I give him. You know what I mean? Yeah. A, a, a zaki right here to the nose, and then we go in here with it. Now when we when we go here, this break right here is the reason why I do this is because I got limited mobility and my weight distribution always I can get thrown off. So I need to make sure that I'm balancing myself okay. at the same time. So I, I love this because I keep balance with this. I hit both arms, and because the mind can't hold two things like this, as a matter of fact, come here, Sam Copeland. All right. Use a strong dude. Use a strong dude. <laughs> okay. You hold the mic. You hold the mic. All right. You hold the mic. No, okay. Sam. Now, okay. Okay. Now, right. you hold the mic. Now, you grab me up. Now, listen, right? right? If right. I was here and I caught you here first, they really hit the first. Okay. It came in. Okay, yeah. No matter how hard. Yeah, right. I, I ain't bit you that yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just touch you just okay, so you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's a right. touch right. there. Right. But right. no matter right. how strong he is, yep. boom. Yeah, I touch him here, yeah. and I got him off me no matter what. He going to let go. He mm -hmm. got to because his brain can't. Mm -hmm. His brain can't do these yeah. two things at yeah. once. He can't hold on yeah, in both yeah. directions at the same time. Touch the Panthers shirt. Yeah, yeah. I got one on the over but Back, the mind can't control mm -hmm. holding in those both directions yeah. at the same time. Yeah. That move right there is perfect for women all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Show slow again. Slow. I'm going to grab you. Strong guy. So Strong people, up. the trained eye. So you don't just try this at home. You know, you, ain't, you want to show it to them slow. So if you're going to try to practice that, you know, you see the format. See, see exactly what it is. Uh, so somebody comes to grab you. you. He grabbed you, you uppercut. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right here, you want to get it to the nose or at least to this part of the mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's a, it is a nerve in there mm -hmm. that'll hurt. You come here and here mm -hmm. because the mind can't hold both. Now, once I get them here, mm -hmm. I do the circle. Mm -hmm. ah, I'm mm -hmm. on this arm. I break the elbow. Once okay, I break the an elbow, elbow. <laughs> 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 I elbow. get the gist. I get the point. <laughs> Lethal brother right here. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and this is why this is very important. Physical fitness. And, and most importantly, getting the mind right. You know what I mean? The discipline behind it is one of the um, things that I respect most. One of the virtues that I re have a high regard and respect for in martial arts. You know, I want you to... Uh, Show a little bit about the school. I want you to come on over here right quick because this is something that caught my eye and I wanted to, you know, bring this to the people definitely here exclusively on Baba TV. There are some people who claim that, you know, pro-blackness, we, we don't need that. That is an outdated paradigm. You know, and to each his own. I believe to some extent certain methodologies are outdated methodologies, but the, the essence of what the idea of what pro-blackness, self-empowerment, Okay, liberation, becoming politically, economically, educationally empowered, culturally astute. Those things are what we mean by pro-blackness. And we are proud to have a culture and a history and a legacy as a people here that we built. Okay, and we, and we represent that. When you kids come in here, right, they learn discipline. They learn culture. They say, Yuhuru Sasa, right? They say black power. When they came in... Explain to me why this picture of Fred Hampton is here. Because I said, that's a damn, that's the brother Fred Hampton. You know, I said, damn, that's powerful that the kids come in here and they learn martial arts, which is known and record, looked at for most as a Middle Eastern discipline, okay, or a uh, 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 fight science, okay. So to come in here and there it is, they're not being detached from their culture, their roots, their history, their identity. That's what I seen when I came in here and I seen this on the wall. The picture of Fred Hampton, and when you zoom in, it says, you you can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill a revolution. Fred Hampton, yeah. tell us why this picture is here and the significance that it has on the door, especially well, for the children. Well, the, um, basically, this is this is the door before you come into our uh, outer dojo. We have two dojos in here. We the shadow dojo. So we have the outer dojo where we bring our youth. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the inner dojo, which is the shadow, where we show you the more deadlier technique. The better you get here, then you transfer over there. You know what I mean? But this door right here is significant because this is the door, as I said, that the youth come in and they bow here. And so we got our brother Fred Hampton, the big homie. You know what I'm saying? We got the big homie Fred Hampton up here. So they have to always give reverence to that mind state, that thought. Mind state. We, you got to 
You know what I mean? See, there's a mantra there. You can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill a revolution. What this is is to put them into the mind state that revolution got to be your culture for you to get better with, for you to do better for your people. So it's supposed to be your culture, and don't worry about life nor death because both of those is guaranteed. Life's gonna come in, death is always gonna take people out. So. What we got going on is that right there, man. So the babies got to come in. They bow right there at the door. Fred Hampton right there, bigging them up every time they come here. And so that's just the move here, man. That's what we're about. Like I said, this is a Panther City. You know what I'm saying? New Haven was one of the strongholds for the Panthers. This is where Bobby Seals and them went to trial. You know what I'm saying? They went to trial for murder right here, killing Alex Rackley. You know what I mean? Where he, they got set up. You know what I'm saying? They were set up by some uh, Fetty Rileys, Warren Kimbrough, and the rest of these daggone cats right here who uh, set the family up. But that's, that's our blood. That's where we come from. And as you were speaking on the martial arts, the science, and most people think of it as a far eastern discipline. They think of the Chinaman with the discipline, but not understanding that these martial arts systems have already been laid down in Africa, and we brought those up out of the inners of Africa out into these other places. And our style here, our mantra is Kentuko Indani, which means in Swahili, we bringing it, we bring out what you got in you, we bring that out. And so we got a, a dynamic universe. You can see that top, that top plaque up there. That top plaque is for, um, that's our professor's plaque right there. And those are two of our, actually, one's a brown belt now and another one's a black belt. But those are two of our other students right there. I believe my daughter plaque might be up there. And, um, but those, that right there is, that's the history here that we got. That's the history here that we got, man. You know what I'm saying? New Haven is a fighting city. Um, Star was here. We was built on revolution. You know what I mean? They had, they had a slave graveyard downtown where I don't really go down there on this green and they party on their graves. They just move the headstones, um, over to what we got to call the Grove Cemetery, which is the only Egyptian cemetery in America. You can go there. You can see they got, you know what I mean? Uh, um, they got the, they got the columns down there. You know what I'm saying? So you can see that this is, they got pylons actually. They got a large pylon down there before you go in there saying that the um the dead shall be raised this, uh, something of that nature you know what i mean over the top i haven't been down there a while but large tech is we don't went down there we do we bring the students down there in the summer so we go down there and explain what a tech it is and show why why would these rich europeans bring an african sign at the death bring a sign like this and put it on their grave forever so we explain to them what these techins are um they got Matter of fact, they even actually got probably a little uh, monster bar out there inside, that, inside the Grove Cemetery. Y'all might get a chance to get over there. It might be open, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's not that far away from here, walking, di walking distance, actually. Um, but those are the things that I think people should know about this, man. This is a fighting city. That, like I said, Amistad was here. You know what I mean? Sinkay was here. We got a uh, uh, plaque to Sinkay down there on the green. We always got a fighting spirit. As I said, it was uh, one of the homes of the Panthers. This Dixwell Avenue was a, a fluent popping market. But we was one of the places that really got crushed because of being what, what they would call model cities. This was once one of the model cities. So... And the model for the city was to bring projects and things of that nature and build large projects. This is one of the first cities that even had what you would call projects, um, low rise and high rise, put together right across the street where they've raised it now and, and brought in some um, different type of homes. But this city was a model. We have the nine squares, historic. Square blocks in the United States are built off of what is downtown these what they call the sacred nine squares which is also some metaphysical type of stuff you know what i mean that they got going on some type of mystic you know it's a type of mystic type of thing so y'all look in the bible steve coakley and he'll teach you about the nine squares right. and right. new haven and all of that so y'all deal with that with that but yale is right downtown skull and bones down here this is a center of um of, of different type of projects social projects social different different type of um Social, uh, let me see, what, what, what? Yeah, yeah, social engineering, that's the right, a lot of different social engineering projects were, were honed right here in New Haven. The AIDS, like, like um, you know, you have a city this small where at once upon a time, in the early 80s, you would have a high school here, Hill House, where, you, where they would say the rate of AIDS there was up 70% amongst the students. 
in the school. You know what I mean? So you know that this was something that was projected upon the community, not something that just naturally happened because we have this great entity called Yale, which is um, always delving into these weird sciences that are here to harm the community. But um, that's what it's about here, man. We're going to take y'all around, let y'all see the rest of the dojo and speak to our professor. We're going to do a little demonstration. We've got the, we're going to let you see what we got for the sisters, though. That's what we're going to really let y'all do, show that. Look, young ladies and sisters, we ready to, to get y'all right and be protected because we know that strong women build that strong community. And if our women is strong in their nature, regardless, they're going to bring up strong men. And I know this because I was in the home with an army father. And when you're in a home with an army father, just like other people who say, well, listen, I didn't have no father in the home. I didn't have a father in the home during those early years. He came home on leave. But my mother was a strong head in the home and which helped bring up strong men. So you're not going to be a feminized by being around a woman, but that woman also has to have strong men as things that she can look at and say, this is what I want my son to be. So y'all just start being strong men out there, and we're going to be able to move this thing forward, bring our young ladies in, get them feeling protected because the rape culture was just, yeah, that's something else that's going on that we always delve into. Um, you can always hit us up. If you get, if somebody has harmed you, you can always call us at 203-802-5425. Uh, anonymously, let us know exactly who it is, what's what, and you know the proper authorities to be on them. You understand? We had the proper authorities after them. So, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but that's that's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. It's about it's about that love, man. Like I said, it's a love for the ladies, man. So we are gonna make sure that one of one of the one of the sisters for the CTRBG gonna come in, throw throw somebody around a little bit. We still gonna work the we gonna still work the majority of the program. You know what I mean? But we gonna work the majority of that program, but we just can't do an eight hour program, but we're gonna do four hours, All no right. matter what. And then just look at some of the pictures. Look at the decor Dr. Dr. in this place. Look what you have. When the kids come in, when they come into this office, what do they see? They see an image of themselves, greatness, scholars, leaders, teachers, okay? Martial artists, you know what I mean? Look at this, Dr. Clark, Malcolm X, Mandela, they see culture up in here. And this is what the babies need to see. This is what needs to be embedded into their collective subconscious on a regular basis to destroy and offset the shackles that are already on our minds by designs intergenerationally. So man, I commend what these brothers are doing and definitely want to be a part of it. CTRBG, right here, look at this. CTRBG, they're representing lovely and they are black, they are proud, and they are proactive, most importantly. Look at this. My, uh, uh, um, my black first, I am black first, Malcolm X. My, my sympathies are black, my uh, allegiance is black, my objectives are black. Damn right. And off to the shadow dojo we go. All right. Sister, you the star. We come in, you know what I'm saying? We got a little spot where we bow. We got, we got, you know what I'm saying? We see Connor. Turn the lights on, though, for that. No, no light, though, in here? Um, oh, it's a light over there. It's a light okay, over there. yeah, because we got we to gotta catch all this. Yeah, on the top, on the top of it. We got a beanie on the wall, too, but we got a beanie on the wall. We got to get, get us some frames. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, but Check it out. Ball, it's about the spirit. We got the over here with the water and what do they do in this room? I notice in different rooms, you see you have the dojo. We had a dojo on the side. Outer. This is a this is the outer. We have an inner dojo. I mean, I, I like the size in there. This, this, ain't, the, this is just, this is more, you know I mean, people come through and you're going to bow right here. Normally, it, you know what I mean, it'll be looking a little bit different right now, but we're just moving things around. But you'll normally come here, you'll take and bow. We got, you know, we got Khaled. Wow. Wow. I'm definitely impressed. We got the uh, black power. Right there. And his, nep and his nephew on top. This, this professor and his nephew on top. But like I said, we got Garvey and Khaled, Malcolm over there. So that's, that's what it's about. Right? I mean, you come in, pay your respects right there. This is what the babies are seeing. This is what the women in the community are seeing when they come in here. You know? Wow. Over here, what do we have right here? And then we got sister, oh, we got sister Afini Shakur. Yeah, we got sister Afini Shakur. Cool 
right here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do. We got to get a little frame for it, but we it's the spirit, so we got it up. We made sure that it's up, though. You know what I mean? We got a little chess board. It's all about the, so the babies can play chess. We keep a little couple toys and stuff like that. But we got, listen, the instruments is, is here. Some of them for decoration, but some of them not. Yeah, some of them not. Yeah, you know what I mean? The babies yeah. can express their talent. Yeah. They might want to kick and box, but they want to be a drummer. Yeah. They might want to kick and box, but they also might be and, able to paint in an art or playing chess. And the majority, so of, and the majority of the things that we, the instruments that we got, they were donated. People like what we were doing and said, listen, man, I got this over there, man. You know, I think y'all can utilize that. All right. All right, thank you. We got this. I think you can utilize that. All right, thank you. So that's what it's about. And we know that, we, like I said, we teach them. Our common unity is our babies, man. That's what we're doing it for. So that's how it works. Or, yo, if y'all sincere about the babies, man, it's going to work. If you're not, it ain't going to work, man. You got to be sincere about the babies. Not the money, not the fame, not none of that. You got to be sincere about the babies, knowing that you don't want to leave your babies. And people might not like People might not like SETI, but SETI said one thing, man, that I'm going to tell you that's strong. He said, yo, how does it feel to know that you ain't got nothing to give to your baby but slavery? What? I don't want to never feel. I, yo, that's make you feel some kind of way for, for somebody to say, that, listen, is this all you want to leave your babies, this same system? You don't want to do nothing? And that made me feel some kind of way. And I, and I give props to that, to that statement right there, man. That's a powerful statement. And, I, and that's what I, I work off things like that grass little pieces because I'm not no I it can't be led by no supreme ego right now. That's another another thing that yo we gotta get off of this um uh this this cult like mentality where we got all this cult leadership. You know what I mean? We can't we beyond the cult leadership and so I don't want our people to stay focused on just one person man. It's a theme. The theme is moving as a nation. Not moving under a person, but moving as one team, man. Right? And that don't mean 100% of us, but that just means the team. Because everybody don't make the cut. <laughs> Straight like that. Everybody don't make the cut. You ain't never seen no... You ain't, trust me. Trust me. Everybody don't get to play on Golden State. Everybody don't get to play, you know what I'm saying, for the top team. And we want to be the top team. So when we the top team, we're going to cut the fat. And everybody don't make the cut. So we got to be strong and our desire for our people. Black power. Let's go ahead and do it again. Oh, so that's good. Y'all got me fucking out. Make it out there. Yeah, I feel good, though. You got me open. I feel Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Perfect. Come on in. Come on. Come on, over here. 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 Sit. Right here in the, in the dojo. I'm going to get a little demonstration by some of the students here at the dojo. You know? As they train, exercise, and get their bodies prepared, but most importantly, their minds right. So we're gonna show us how, how, you, how it's done, you know? Don't try this at home, children, either. To train students. I get hurt. Those who come up with their hands down. But now, but with the sisters, though, um, show them the show them. Um, Sister Don, Sister Don, go and just grab four and just break it on me. Bring him out. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna fuck my Gary to his to his gut. You know what I'm saying? Grab right, one more time, one more time. Right? Shot block and drop. That's what it's about. It's about immediately making sure that you can stop them, 
You hit them and get them away from you. And me Explain to them what they're doing. Our system, show the con, is shock, block, and drop. We want to, you know what I'm saying, what, what it's about is you shock them initially, block, shock, and drop. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to make sure. Thank you very much. That's our brother on the side, Majestic, making sure, big brother over there, making sure I'm right. But it's shock, it's block, shock, and drop. You block whatever's coming for you, you shock them. So that's what this specific technique they're demonstrating right here is. This yeah, what this is. is. Exactly. This okay. is the, what this is. Block, shock. And, as, and you can see where she hitting them at. She hitting them with what? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. But, uh, you know, I start to get my bush. I say, hold up. Something too close to me. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, that's what we just want to show. There's just that basic, just a, a basic technique. That anybody, you know, somebody throwing a, somebody throwing a punch at you. Normally, most people fight. They, they're not educated at fighting, so most people throw hooks when they are fighting. So, you know, you just want to block the initial hook with what we call a shoot throw, a shoot throw block, which is a, a strong knife hand block. We hit them with the shoot throw bomb, our outside block, which he's demonstrating right now, a strong outside block. You know what I mean? And, she, you know, you break them, bomb. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But that, that's what it is. It's block, shock, and drop. You go ahead, give them a shoot throw. Give them a shoot throw. <laughs> And then shoot on to, to the neck, then a bomb, another shoot throw, and then a, a drop. And then she comes through and she drops them. You know what I mean? And, and, and as we said, the shoot throw block is one of the, this is the basic block in Shotokan and Jiu Jitsu and a lot of the Japanese forms of martial arts. A nice KI on it, you know what I mean? Which shows she got energy. Because that's what you want to do. You want to be making sure that you get your breathing right, in and out, in and out. A shoot throw is not only a block. Hold on. A strike. A is not only a block, it is also a strike. So when you hit him with it, it it's, it's considered a block, but the way it feels, you know it's a strike. All right, so when you get hit with it, you might not be, you might think twice about throwing a second punch because it's a strike. Case in point. <laughs> Give us a demonstration. All right. Yeah, the shoot toe. And you want to practice that. And like, and, and the sister going over and over and over, repeat. We want to just show you the technique over and over and over again so you can at least learn that one thing. You know what I mean? Right now, just, just today, you can learn this one thing. How to at least stop somebody from hitting you, and then you can be able to get into whatever you want to get into. She can bomb. Now he open. He open for a... Maybe a, a Zaki, a front Zaki to the face, bomb. You know what I'm saying? Which she just gave him a nice Zaki to the face. And Zaki just mean a punch. So he bomb. An Empe, that's Empe Kai. So you hit him with an Empe Kai, an a elbow. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, a nice, give him a nice front Margari to the, you know, to the solar plex. Yeah. And that's what you want to do, because that's, that's what it's about. You want to make sure that you can stop their initial attack and then you get yours off. And that's what we teach here. We teach the babies. It's about self-defense. We ain't going out there to pick no fights with nobody, but we damn sure ain't going to let nobody pick no fight with us. And we going to respect that. I respect that to the fullest, King. All right. All right. All right. All right. Powerful. Yes. I'm impressed. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. We're going to get the, we're going to try to get the professor out here. All right. Turn it to the shadow for y'all. Okay. Make sure you zoom in on this too, Baba. This is their flag. Come on. Come on. Now, right here, the CTRBG is the name of the movement. We are in the Shadow Dojo. Explain to the people the concept of this flag. I mean, it's self explanatory, but break down what inspired this flag, who came up with it, how long y'all had it, and um, drop it on the people, brother, so we can know what CTRBG is. Yo, know, um, basically CTRBG is just uh, one of the, one of the branches of the larger red, black, and green nation, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we just deal with the family first, and like you see the flag, it's Connecticut. It's a flag. The uh, the inner part that's a map of Connecticut. We put the red, black, and green up there, which is you know which stands, which is the representation of Marcus Garvey's flag. You know what I mean? Which he gave to us so we could have a national flag as a people unified all across the world. What they call the diaspora. In the, in, in the middle of that, you have a Maasai tribe shield 
because we the warriors. You, you'll see my brother Majestic got on his Maasai mask right now. You know, we the Maasai tribe up here in CT. You know what I mean? And then we got that Africa in the, in the side so we can always, you know, it's, it's about giving our reverence back to where we came from and making sure that you know that we connected. So it's about building that connection with the family, man, and making sure that the family know that we all connected. It's, it's a lot of us out here. And a lot of the, a lot of what we, you know what I mean? A lot of what the people, or, or what the people know off of media, or, or social media, or being what's representative of the RBG nation doesn't represent the whole of us. And, uh, and, the majority of the brothers that I know that represent the CTRBG nation, they, they're not really on the media. They're not really, it's not a really media savvy type of uh, thing that we're into. We're into more of putting in the work. You can look at, you know, Lone Star uh, RBGs out there in Texas, you know what I'm saying, who do the RBG Family Day. Those brothers right there, some of the brothers who help inspire what we're doing up here because we've seen that we could be grassroots, build your own schools. Um, have black people come down and have good times with each other. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what it was really about. We, we, we took off of what we seen going on and said, you know what? We part of that. We part of that. Wait a minute. So since we part of that, let's go ahead and make our ties and tie you on in. And we locked arms, and, and locked arms with the greater nation, man. So that's what it is, CTRBG, and, and that's what it's about. So um, that's what that flag is about, man. We've been established since 2016. I went down to the RBG uh, Family Day, you know, already always been connected with the brothers from down there, you know what I'm saying? And matter of fact, I've been connected to the brothers in North Carolina. I lived in a lot of different places in America, so I've been connected with brothers all over, and, and, that's, how, and, and that's what it's about. That's how we linked in, man, because we just, I know personal, I like personally tied in with a lot of people, you know what I mean? I'm the type of person who I'll, I want to see you. You know what I mean? I want to be able to, I be able to shake your hand, you know what I mean? You know, I'm up here in Connecticut, guys look like, yo, like, cats don't go to New York. I go down. I done been to plenty, many of the debates. Some of the, what they call the top debates that done been had. I done been to a lot of those things. And I, I stopped going to the venues, but one of the things that I want to see and that we can get is if we can get a debate going on dealing with our great esteemed elder, Dr. Amos Wilson's work, A Blueprint for Black Power, and our new scholar, M. Wally Mubaruti, and his book, Asafo, a warrior, you know what I mean, a warrior's guy, you know what I mean, to manhood, I think if we could get a debate on how to mesh those two together and come up with a, a, a format for us to put into each city, I think that that would be a great debate to have because I think the people would really get something out of it. This is a template. I say that to say this, especially with the institutions here, the first Ivy League universities. It was called New England for a reason. From the first Caucasians from England came here first. This was New England. So they set this as their foot, as their stronghold. So some of the first Ivy League universities right here, okay, where they mastered their social arts and scientists to make their political regimes and objectives and agendas be more sufficient and advancing for them to run to oppress you better with in the long term and benefit themselves better with long term. We come from a part of the country that is the origin or the essence, the cradle of liberty, as they called it, New England. You know what I mean? So um, but this is a template of a lot. I'm going somewhere with the point. This is a template of... What you see, the, um, the disproportionate distribution of wealth and privilege, um, a lot of the social injustices by design that you see, which is genetically engineered, I mean, genetic socially, excuse me, that too, but it's social engineering is at the root to the agenda. Social engineering, a lot of it is right here in Yale, right in Skull and Bones, okay, who came up with the Alpha Phi Phi, Okay, the black boule, whole nother topic, but it's connected to the people, the elites right here in Yale, black people right here. Um, and in Harvard, the key and bone, where your world leaders, right? Okay, are created and manufactured right here. So here it is, we have the pendulum of some of the most dangerous and notorious city streets, unbeknownst to most, some, Bridgeport, Hartford, New Haven, and then some of the most richest counties, Greenwich, and some of the most elitist world controllers right here in one of the smallest states in this whole country. It's amazing, right? And one, of the, one of the things that you hit on about Connecticut, Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut in general was powerful because Connecticut used to own all the way out to the Ohio Valley. You know what I mean? This was how far Connecticut stretched. But it was leased off into these other sections to create these other states that go out that far. So a lot of the wealth is accumulated here because a lot of the people who had that wealth, they just stayed in this one central location. Um, on to the point of being New England and realizing words got power when you're dealing inside the 
Caucasian, you know what I'm saying, mind state that his words mean what they mean, what he say. And a lot of times, and so this is a New Haven. So I always ask my people when I'm talking to them about New Haven, I say, yo, this is a New Haven. What, what does that mean? The cat's like, yo, I'm like, yo, what is a haven? And a haven is a safe place. So this was a new safe place. For what? For who? You know what I'm saying? No, and then we look and see what type of things was, was brought up here. And you say, oh, this is what it was a safe place for. For the new Masonic, you know what I'm saying, takeover on this side of the, <laughs> of the world. You have, if you look into the history, you got to look up who Dixwell, Whaley, and Gorf are. This I want Dixwell you, Avenue. Dix, yeah, you got to look up who these people are. These are people in history. You got to look up. Dixwell and put New Haven. I'm only going to give y'all that. Dixwell and New Haven. Look up Whaley and New Haven historically and find out what this is about. This was, a, this was going to be a major port, but we have a rock out there in our harbor that ships can't go through. So since the ships can't get through, that's why New Haven never turned into the large port that it would have been is because of that factor. This would have been more like a capital up here inside of New England. This is where New Haven would have been. Um, but that history is important. That history is, is very important. I just wanted to make sure that people got that, that really look up what, an, what a haven is and, and why this city has so much power, powerful energy. There's a lot of black people. Black people got a large strength here, man. We really was able to manufacture something good here. One of the first black colleges was going to be formed here and was stopped by Yale. This is why we still got to fight against Yale, which always looks like a liberal, you know, like, yeah, they want to do good things for the people, but they actually help make sure that black people didn't have their own free college here. You know what I mean? Um, but that's just, that's just touched on some of the history of New Haven. Um, any other, you know, any other thing you want to know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm willing to, you know, add on what I can. And anything I can't, I know you might be able to find out from somebody else. <laughs> or next time I'll know. <laughs> I'll look it up. Now, you've definitely been informative to the people. I think that this um, is a video that is going to, I personally can say is one of the greatest, or more specifically, that I participated in as far as conducting an interview. Because as far as the substance that we're talking about, the essence of what we're talking about, the value in that, and what we're bringing to the people, how it was articulated and how it was demonstrated, and how the people can see that black power is not a played out paradigm. You know what I'm saying? It never was played out. Methodologies, ideas, and certain figures, and certain semantics and shenanigans should be played out, never should have been played in. But the idea of complete constructive change, okay? Social empowerment and advancement and transcending the colonial uh, shackles that hinder us for co from collective growth and autonomy as a people, you represent that there is hope that we can still accomplish that because you're dealing with our best and primary resource, which is the babies. See, this is institution, and within the dangerous streets of New Haven, there is a safe haven in this institution. So I think that this was a very meaningful, purposeful, and powerful um, segment that we conducted on Baba TV due to the fact that we are talking about things that deal with preventive measures because a lot of people that come in here, you're educating them, you're schooling them, you're teaching about their great ancestors, they're going to become great too. And this offsets and undermines the plans of actions by designs and social engineering that our children fall into because it's being perpetuated as popular. But you're making discipline popular. You're making knowledge of self popular. You learn, you're teaching physical fitness is popular and this is hip and this is what it is. So I want to commend you on that and let you know that it's an honor and a privilege to allow us into your home to conduct this interview. I definitely want to uh, say that to you and this is from the heart and I love y'all brothers and sisters and the queen and what y'all are doing and that we want to do anything that we can do to contribute to the advancement okay, and the expansion of this and institutions and the like, all right? So anything you want to close out with, with the people, be my guest, Black Power. All right, Black Power, we, you know, well, I'd like to close out and just say that, you know, um, Brother Sierra Cover did come down to when our poetry and politics, which was two weeks ago. Um, that was the launch of my daughter. My daughter, you know, one of the things that we do teach is entrepreneurial spirit. My daughter just turned 16 and 
uh, two weeks ago was the launching of her own product line. Uh, you know, I, and a lot of times we want our children to do more. So I've been on my child for, you know, about the last two years. Like, listen, you have to have a business. And through, I, I fell off of her, and just through the diligence, she just went ahead and said, you know what, this is what I like. I like to do this right here. So she came up with a cream line called My Queen's Creams, um, Hair and Body Essentials, which is uh, which I advertise on my Facebook page. You can hit me up on Yancey Bourne Horton. You know what I'm saying? You can catch me. That's on, on the book. You can hit me at CTRBG um, on Twitter. And I don't know if I'm on. I'm on Instagram and some. I don't, I don't know. I'll be up there. But we, yeah, we'll put, yeah, we'll put, all, we'll put all that up there. Um, but check us out. July 1st will be poetry and politics, and every two weeks we'll be doing that. And that's one of the other things that the professor has allowed us to have, is have somewhere where we can have a venue that we can put these things on, that people can come out, you can voice your opinion, and don't have the fear that somebody there is going to just shout, shout you down because you talking black love, you talking black strength, you talking energy, and you can feel comfortable here. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times we got to have somewhere where we can feel comfortable where the white man just ain't, all into everything. He just don't own everything. Like I said, it, we, we black renters written from a black man, you know what I'm saying, he, who own the strip. So that's what it's about. And we just try to make sure that we maintain this. And we're going to, and we're going to do that with the strength of the people. So with that, with that being said, man, um, like I said, July 1st is going to be poetry and politics. Oh, we're doing, yeah, the Poetry and Politics, that's right. It's a fundraiser. The Poetry and Politics is a fundraiser. Uh, we got vendors that come out. Uh, we like to have at least five vendors that come out every week so we can have somewhere for them to be at. It's a small vending fee. We only charge $15 for the vending fee so you can come in. But it's all a fundraiser just so we can make sure that we can scholarship our children like we've been doing. So we can make sure we keep our lights on like we, you know, like in, we just need, we just shouting out to the people and, and asking because Brother Sankofa said, look, y'all might need a little bit of help. And I think you might be able to help us. You know what I'm saying? And I said, well, all right then. I'm going to reach out. You know, you reached out to me, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead, grab the mic, and, and, you know, come on and, and do the interview, man. Because if you think we can get some help, all right, then cool. But if not, we're going to, like I said, we're going to do what we got to do. We love the family, so we want the family to come show that love. We're in New Haven, Connecticut, 8 o'clock to 12. You know what I mean? You can come through every two weeks. So on a Saturday, come get with us, and we're going to be rocking poetry and politics, man. That's what they do. Um, anything else that I should hit, Sister Diamond? Sister Diamond, come on and, and, and say something for the people. Okay, we, can't. we can never conclude this interview without, uh, without this beautiful uh, uh, queen here who is a master martial artist, master student martial artist here. Um, designer, business owner. And um, so basically tell the people who you are and what you do here on the ground in CT as well. Well, uh, very quickly, I am Diamond Tree. <laughs> I'm Diamond Tree. Um, on Facebook, I'm Diamond Tree. My partner, Majestic Divine, on the side. Um, together we have MD Boutique. And um, it's quality fashion and authentic essentials. Um, we rock out. We make African original jewelry and clothing. And um, we train here at the dojo. It's a wonderful experience. Um, I'm now in brown belt, so I'm very happy about that. And I'm black power all day. Tell them how they can, all day. Can, uh, if they want to purchase some of your... Um I know. Well, you, you can hit us up on Facebook, MD Boutique, Quality Fashion, and Authentic Essentials. Um, our page is on Facebook. And, um, and you can hit us, hit us up on Instagram as well. Black Power, Majestic Divine. Black Power, Majestic Divine. You know, I just want to give a brief what we do out here. We're trying to bring back, you know, our model for CTRBG is Family First. We merge with Dynamic University you know, under Josh Shabazz, because he has the same vision as we have to expand the martial arts program, do something for the, you know what I'm saying, the kids in the hood who, who, who can't afford it really, you know what I'm saying, but need that focus, discipline, control, and that's what we, you know, provide, you know. And, you know, um, you know, other than that, you know, we ain't doing it for the publicity, none of that, you know what I'm saying, we doing it because we love the people, we love the kids, you know what I'm saying. Um, um, you know, we blessed that Sankofa come up here, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, shout us out, you know, show some love as well as Baba, ba, you know what I'm saying, Baba ba TV, every time fire, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can you know, you reach Diamond Tree on Facebook at Diamond Tree, Majestic Divine, you know. Mm -hmm. um, brother Born. Brother Born, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? My brother, you know, Asa right here, you know, Rome, I don't know where he went, you know, <laughs> but, you know, 
Um, thanks for the love, you know, the attention, all that. Goddess, Queen, Charisma, shout out everybody. You know, shout out the whole family, you know what I'm saying? House of Consciousness, everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's everybody out there. Black power, black power, you know what? Because we don't really do this like that. So we forget, yo. But we do want to give a shout out, you know what I'm saying, to Uncle Al, you know what I'm saying? That's our CTRBG OG, you know what I'm saying? Brother Shelton, you know what I mean? Brother J.O., you know what I mean? Um, Brother Mo Blessing, who not right here. Uh, Brother E, you know what I'm saying? El Muhammad, you know what I'm saying? The pillar of, the, uh, uh, of right here. We want to give a shout out to our brother Rob, for our big Rod. Yeah, Brother Lee, you know what I'm saying? Um, Brother Lee got the dashiki woman. Y'all should check them out, you know what I'm saying? Look for that, Lee Brown. They put out that work. Um, um, who else? Who else? Who else we got in there? Who else we got in there? You know, we got uh, Sister Asada. Yeah, Sister Asada, Sister Shaw. Yeah, yeah, Sister Gwen, Sister Shante. Yeah, all, all of the, y'all, y'all, Sister Shante, Brother Darice, um, Brother Bunchy, you know what I'm saying? Our Brother G, we like, uh, uh, yeah, we, we got a family here, man. We, this ain't all of us, but this is this is us, man. And, and we definitely appreciate Sankofa, Baba TV, Every Time Fire. I appreciate the, the platforms such as the House of Consciousness, which have gave awareness. And we like to make sure that um, we give the love to everybody. Brother Rome, going to say a word to y'all real quick, man. We're just going to let our young G show y'all what, what it's really about, man. It's, you know what I mean? We, we don't know how, how, what time it is out here, man. It's yeah, I'm Brother Ron. Um, on Facebook, I'm M U N S O N B L K space E A S T O N space R T C for me, C A L I W E. But, you know, I had to spell it out because people don't know how to say it. It's must and block Cali up for me. But, um, yeah, man, we out here, you know, putting in this work, you know, trying to make sure that the youth got something to do, you know, making sure that these streets is clean from all the mind-boggling bull crap that's going on, you know, because everybody into something that's, like, draining them from doing what they actually want to do. They always want to follow the trends and all that. We try to make it a trend to be yourself and not be someone else, feel me? Everybody, just show love to yourself, you know? If you love yourself, feel me, everybody else is going to love you, feel me, because you love yourself. So since I love myself and what my man's be saying, this is myself, this is myself, this is myself, that's myself, that's myself, that's myself. If I love myself, I don't need nobody else to love me because I love myself. For me, a community is only as good as the people in it. For me, and if it ain't nobody in it, then it's not a community. It takes a village to raise a village. Love y'all. Peace, peace. Take that. Black power. Black power. Peace and black power. And to our next segment, people, a Baba Fire Every Time, bringing it to you like how we always do, raw, real, uncut, unrehearsed, and from the people. You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned for segments like this and much more as we navigate on this journey to liberate your mind. Peace and black power.